All right. Good day. Today's notes consist with using the kinematic equations in order to work constant acceleration questions. I'm not going to derive the equations right now. I have a separate video on deriving those equations if anyone's interested. But the equations are V equals VO plus AT. Delta X equals VOT plus one-half AT squared. And V squared equals VO squared plus 2A delta X. So there's our three equations. Now let's get into the actual work in the problems. Most of the problems are about the same. I'll start most of them drawing a little line like this because every, every problem we're working first is going to be a constant acceleration in X dimension, which is why I use the X. Uh, I call this my X initial point. This point down here would be my X final. Now, since delta X is X final minus X initial, what happens most of the time, my X initial point, I usually make zero. So X initial is usually cancels. So I'm usually just left with an X. So half the time I don't even write delta X. You just see me write X like this is it. I don't write delta X. I just write like X equals VOT. So anyway, just to clear up how I write the problems first, let's take care of that. All right. These problems, you will have a velocity initial. And the reason why you write VO, it means velocity when time is equal to zero. Because you could also write these equations as delta T and have time initial, time final. But we're just going to write time period. Uh, so VO stands for velocity when your time is at zero. So it's velocity initial. Just V is just your final velocity. These problems will also have an acceleration and they will have a time in the problems. So a generic problem would start off looking like, let's make it look like this. Uh, let's say that VO, V, X, A, and T are the variables that you'll have in pretty much all these problems. Uh, if you want to, we can say that X is 20 meters. We could say that the acceleration is 5 and that VO is... All we need is three of the five numbers to find anything that we want. So let's just say that VO is equal to uh, hmm, 4. So if this was our meters per second meters per second square. If this was our four numbers, we should be able to find anything else we wanted to from this list. Uh, I'm just going to try and find time first. Um, I'm looking here. I've got V, O, X, and A. And if you look up here, V, O, X, and A are all found in this third equation. And I want to pick this one first because this gives us a chance to use a quadratic because uh, T is the only unknown left in this equation. So let's just go ahead and write out X equals VOT plus one-half AT squared. Now, if you go ahead and plug in your variables, you're going to have 20 equals 4T plus one-half 5T squared. Pretty soon, right off the bat, you should know this. With a t and the t square for an unknown, we've got a quadratic. So let's set it up in quadratic form. 0 equals negative 20 plus 4t plus 2.5t square. Now, I'm going to go to a Casio with a built-in quadratic function. Mode, mode, mode. 1 over 2 degrees, please. A would be the square variable, B would be the 4, and then C is the negative 20 out here. So we'll go 
2.5, enter. 4, enter. Negative 20, enter. 2.13 and negative 3.7 are the answers. Well, time can't be a negative 3 value, so 2.14 is my answer. So time equals 2.14 seconds. Now, if you would still like to find this velocity, we could use either the third equation to find this velocity or the first equation that we have time. I'm going to use the first equation since we already have time and just write V equals VO plus AT. So we've got V equals 4 plus 2.5 times 2.14. And as soon as I figure out what I've done with the calculator that was in my hands just a moment ago. Ha! There we go. Don't really need it. It's basically going to be right at 9... Oh, well, we have nine and a half. Let's see if we're right. Uh, four plus 2.5 times 2.14. 9.35. So 9.4. I was close. 9.35 meters per second for the final velocity. All right. That's kind of a good look at what most of these problems are going to look like. Uh, let's do a couple of uh, them from the textbook that we're using in class. So, uh, taking a look, uh, be my example D. A race car starts from rest, so I'm going to start it out. Dot. Put my little racetrack down. Dot. And it says it starts from rest. Starting from rest tells us a velocity initial of zero and accelerates at a rate of 5 meters per second square. There, I'll set it down for a second. A race car starting from rest accelerates at a rate of 5. What is the velocity of car after 100 feet? So it accelerates at 5 meters per second square. It does that over a distance of 100 feet. What is its velocity at the end? Now, the only thing that we have to do is that 100 feet has to be changed to meters. So that's 30.5 meters. Now, what is the velocity at the end? Uh, if you look, we've got V, O, V, A, and X. Uh, using these variables, we can use the third equation. V squared equals V, O squared plus 2, A, X. So we can go in here, VO square cancels since it's zero. And so literally this is V square equals two times five times 30.5. So there's 10 times 30 is 305. So we've got V square equals 305. But because this is a squared term, we need to take the square root of our answer so V is equal to the square root of 305. Wow, I cannot type and look at a computer at the same time. 17.5. So there's your final velocity, 17 and a half meters per second. Uh, let's take a look at the next problem we got. Uh, this next one will be my example E from this chapter. Uh, it's an automobile manufacturer uh, claims its super deluxe sports car can go from rest to 87 miles per hour in 8 seconds. So we've got a car starting from rest. So VO, once again, is zero. It's accelerating up to 87 miles per hour. So velocity final of 87 miles per hour. And it does this in a period of 8 seconds. Now, first thing, that miles per hour has got to be gone in this problem. So 87 times 5 to 80. Let's see. Divide by 3.281. Divide by 3,600. 
So we've got 38.9 meters per second. If you don't know how to do those conversions, you need to go back to earlier videos on how to do your conversions. So that's 38.9 meters per second. By the way, roughly, if you're doing these conversions for velocity, usually your meters per second is a little less than half of your miles per hour. So if you got 87, you should be guessing around 40 for your meters per second. So it's a little way of checking yourself. Uh, question A says find acceleration. V, O, T, and V, and we're looking for acceleration. Well, the first equation I would go to is the uh, first equation. V equals VO plus AT. VO cancels out. So we've got 38.9 equals A times 8. So 38.9 divided by 8 is 4.86. So we've got 4.9 meter per second square acceleration in this problem. All right. So, what does part B ask us to find? Part B asks us to find the displacement. So, part A wants us to do this. Part B wants us to find X. So, what is the displacement of the car? Uh, I would just go to the second equation. Uh, for part B, X equals VOT plus one-half at square. VO was zero, so we can just mark out VOT. So we've got X equals one half of A, which is in this case 4.9 meters per second square times, uh, we have a time of eight seconds, and this is going to be equal to nineteen point six meters for a displacement in this problem. Alright, uh, I'm going to shoot one other video clarifying a couple of the tougher problems including the two-part problem. The two-part problem is not too hard. The biggest trick on it when you work the two-parter is first off make your line like this and have a midpoint. And so the trick of the two-part question is this. You have two x's. You will have two accelerations. But here's the big part. You'll have a velocity initial for this part and a velocity final. The trick is this. Whatever your velocity final for this part is, velocity initial for the second part is the final velocity for the first part. Then you'll have another final velocity down here. Other than that, you'll have a time one and a time two, but what ties them together are these velocities in the case of these problems. All right, I'll close with good luck and maybe a smiley face, maybe two. I'm really happy.